var med oss och ett par andra som startade det här. Vi snackade en del om eh hur vi är er, liksom det var bynt att bara snacka lite om feminism och kvinnor musik och sånt och så hade vi inte nog det var inte nog fokus på det sån i Tromsø ända då. Och så 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 möttes vi bara och pratade lite om at det kanske kunde märka och samla flera av de damer som var i olika konstellationer band och sån i byen för att liksom samlas och spela samman och lite sån för att de flesta av oss spelade var liksom den enste damen i alla bandan på något sätt och lite sån I come I come from music education so I'm originally a music teacher um, but my main research area would be popular culture and uh, the discourses and the norms uh, that revolve around popular culture and especially in terms of, of gender and gender equality. So, uh, and I realized that it's something that uh, at least in, in Swedish media it's so often used like in uh, media headlines and so on uh, when women's entrance into traditionally masculine domains uh, when that is discussed. But it's never problematized, it's never even described what does it mean if women have to claim space in technology, in sports, in popular music, what does it mean? It's not just about leaving these kind of these strategies for change up to people that are marginalised. It's also about engaging, particularly young men, and getting them to actually think about their actions and engaging them in strategies for change. Um, so it, again, it's not just about increasing representation. It's also we have a responsibility to educate specifically young men about how they should be behaving in music spaces, how they should be uh, thinking about who they collaborate with and who they cooperate with, and thinking about how networks can actually informally or unintentionally exclude people of different genders. If half of the population owns the music, it's a problem. Uh, so if men or boys are the uh, the keepers of this power that music can be, uh, then we have a problem in the world. Uh, if they are the ones who decide what is good music, or if uh, powerful white males are the ones who decide what we listen to, how we listen to it, how much we listen to it, and what the messages are, we have a problem. Uh, and at the same time, I think that music, uh, since it is a powerful tool, it also is a possibility to use for change. I'm conducting uh, an academic female choir at the university and in this choir we have um, a tradition that all our concerts must include one, at least one work of a female composer. But we can also observe today in particular I think among female composers that they through their music discuss what is it to be a woman today, what is it to be a woman, a mother, an artist or um, whatever. Uh, what kind of perspectives, what happens if I bring, uh, combine Beyoncé and uh, Orfeo in a new opera, as Rebecca Aviniemi just did. Um, what does this do with the way we look at gender and the way we hear gender in music, and perhaps the way we perceive music at all? Uh, I think we have a, a special duty in the sense that we are dealing with uh, the unconsciousness of, of society. That's one of the lessons learned from the Balance Programme, that uh, the leaders are crucial. When we have to have the leaders on board in order to, to make a change. If the leaders are not on board, then nothing happens. So the leaders, they, they are sort of the key, well, at least one key to, to gender balance. One of the things that the arts can do is to show us worlds that don't even exist yet because um, arts and artists show imaginary worlds. So the best of the arts, um, or arts that are showing a positive world, might show us worlds in which gender balances are existing as a matter of course. But they can also do the opposite. They can show us the lessons of what might happen if we don't try to work harder towards a more balanced society. Thank you.